You might have noticed that Taylor Swift's public appearance has started to decline. There are a lot of reasons, most involving the Grammys, but they all happened really, really quickly. So if you saw a flood of TikToks on your FYP, like I did, about, and everybody's mad at Taylor Allison Swift, I'm here to break it down for you. Disclaimer. I make the joke that I am a born again Swifty, AKA I was not like a huge fan of her until recently. I've always liked her music, but I never called myself a Swifty because I didn't know any of like the Easter eggs, the lore, you know, things about her life. Like I just didn't know I enjoyed her music sometimes. So I'll be totally honest. I do like Taylor Swift and I like her music. So let's start from the beginning. The Swifties put together some clues that something would be announced on February 2nd, 2024, 2424, which was the night of the Grammys. They theorized that she was going to announce Reputation, Taylor's version. Now they were correct. She did announce a new album, but not a Taylor's version, a brand new album. The Tortured Poets Department. Opinion, I think that's an awful album name, but <laughs> I digress. Now, that's all good and grand, but it's the way that she announced it and the entire night of the Grammys, to be honest. So let's go in order. A lot happened very quickly, so quickly, in fact, that I have created <laughs> a numbered list, okay? Number one, the rehearsed reaction. People immediately clocked the way that Taylor reacted when she won Album of the Year. By the way, I'm not going to comment on whether or not I think Midnight should have won Album of the Year. That's an entire other video. But she won her 13th Grammy, by the way. Her favorite number. What a coincidence. And her reaction, I just, I honestly hate to use this word, but it was cringy. She was kind of like, what? Me? <laughs> Little old me? I can't believe it. I think that when we see something that is so cringy that it's on like a deep visceral I can't look at this anymore sort of level it's because we see something that is just completely inauthentic and her reaction in my opinion was very inauthentic it totally rubbed people the wrong way because it looked like she rehearsed it in a mirror and the whole thing about this announcement is that she either planned to announce this album on 2424 and it just happened to be the night of the Grammys or she knew she was gonna win and she planned it like this. The latter option definitely brings up some questions, but I digress. She wins, she acts completely shocked, like this is her first Grammy win ever. And then before she can even get up on stage, we're on to our second controversy. Poor Lana. She dragged Lana Del Rey up on stage with her to accept this award. It was clear to everyone that Lana did not want to be there. She just lost Album of the Year again. Lana Del Rey has been overlooked as an artist for like forever. So it is so awkward to see Taylor literally drag her as she's like, ha ha ha, oh no, like, no, that's okay. Like trying to be polite and then stand on stage while her friend wins the award she was also nominated for. And then we get these pictures of Lana standing as far back as she possibly can, trying not to be noticed. Oh, it's so awkward. It's so awkward. And the viewers at home, we all felt collectively like very bad for Lana. And a side note, there's footage as well of Taylor being glued to Lana's side while they're walking down the red carpet, acting kind of like her tour guide. Like it's very strange. It's like as if Lana Del Rey has never been on a red carpet before, as if she isn't a very accomplished artist in her own right. Now, of course, we aren't friends with Lana. We don't know her on a personal level. She could be totally comfortable here. But my interpretation is she is not having a good, <laughs> she's not having a good time. On to controversy number three, Queen Celine. Now, this is the first one I saw online. I swear people were making videos about this moment before Taylor even sat down after accepting her award. Celine Dion, the queen of all divas, was a surprise guest to present the Album of the Year award. She comes out, there's tons of applause, not only because Celine is music industry royalty, but because Celine Dion recently announced that she is suffering from a neurological disorder called stiff person syndrome. And this has begun to affect her voice and she is effectively retired now. This is heartbreaking. I can't imagine what it feels like to Celine as a singer at heart, like her entire life she's been a singer 
singer. This is heartbreaking for her fans. The video where she announced this on her Instagram genuinely made me cry. It's it's really sad. So when Taylor Swift, in her excitement, walked right up to Celine, grabbed the award out of her hand, didn't look her in the eye, didn't shake her hand, didn't hug her, didn't even acknowledge her presence, <gasps> people were big mad. People aren't being nitpicky either. This isn't Celine's super fans just like freaking out over nothing. It was, <laughs> it was awkward. Do I think Taylor did this intentionally? No, absolutely not. I think that she was way too busy living her life in the third person, planning how she was going to react, how she was gonna grab the award, smile big for the camera, like, Oh my God, I won. That girl was not present at the Grammys for a microsecond. Everything was planned out. So why would she acknowledge Celine Dion? She didn't know who was going to present the award. That wasn't a part of her plan. And you know Taylor Swift's team works fast because before the night was over, Taylor had a picture loving all over Celine Dion. And come on, guys, we know Taylor does not do anything on accident. She is a mastermind, self-admitted. She is constantly strategizing. Contrary to what a lot of people believe, I don't think this makes her an evil genius. I think this makes her a very savvy and successful artist, but it's still worth mentioning. Controversy number four, the new album. The Swifties were right and they rejoiced. Taylor Swift announced a brand new album. But instead of announcing it after the Grammys on her Instagram that night or even on the red carpet beforehand, she announced it on stage. My brand new album. And the audience response was polite. They clapped, they smiled, but the vibe was noticeably awkward. And a lot of her fans noticed too, and they were wondering why. Well, it's about the time and place. Taylor got up there and announced her album as if she was in front of 50,000 of her diehard fans at an Eras Tour concert, but she wasn't. She was at a prestigious award show for her industry. Think of it like a fancy work event. Do you think Beyonce was in the audience and was like, Taylor Swift is giving us another album? No, because that audience was filled with her colleagues, not her fans. And I think this is an example of Taylor not reading the room. This night was not the Taylor Swift show and the audience's reaction reflected that. Controversy number five, behind the scenes with Boy Genius. Now you might've seen these pictures online. Up until this point, I did not know anything about Boy Genius, okay? So I am brand new. This is the first interaction I'm actually seeing of them. The first thing I thought was the one in the middle, Julian, seems like she's happy crying and Taylor's in the corner being obnoxious. Why is she putting it on her head? Like she's just being annoying. <laughs> but once I went from seeing the photos to seeing the behind the scenes video, I went from cringing to groaning. Can I put them on your head? It's so sad. Taylor Swift is saying, let's take a picture just for our houses, just for our houses, I promise. Basically saying, I want to get a picture with you guys, but it won't go anywhere. It'll just be for us. Julian is visibly upset and I don't know the whole story, but she's not happy to be there right then. I know I'm projecting right now, but I felt her in that moment. Like that is what I look like where I'm reaching my breaking point where like I'm overwhelmed, I'm overstimulated. This is all too much. I'm about to to melt down. But either way, she's visibly upset. She's withdrawing. She does not want to take this picture, but Taylor is pressuring her to come over and take a photo. Phoebe is comforting her. She's trying to smile through the tears. Ugh, my heart. And can you guess how we got our hands on these photos? Were they leaked? Did someone break into their, their houses and take them off the walls? Taylor said that they would be just for them, right? No. They were from Page News, which is so tacky. And the, the thing is, is you can say, well, Taylor couldn't control that they were on websites and, you know, entertainment like tabloids. They were all over him. But she should have been aware that picture wouldn't have just been for them. It felt like she was not aware of the experiences of those around her. And when you are not aware of the experiences around you, even if you have the best of intentions, you are going to hurt people. Conclusion. Do I think Taylor Swift is a narcissist? No. I think people who are analyzing her and calling her a narcissist or a sociopath or that she has like evil energy and dark eyes, literally I saw a video like that. I think they need to chill, okay? But I do think that she is about as narcissistic as someone of her status of celebrity becomes. I think she lives her life in third person, constantly strategizing, curating, and trying to perfect 
her public image. I think when people talk about celebrities being unrelatable, they usually look at it from a lens of wealth and privilege. Like, how much could a banana cost? $8 or whatever it is. It's one banana, Michael. What could it cost? $10? That kind of being out of touch. But I think what we really need to acknowledge is what celebrity, especially the level of like superstar that Taylor Swift is, what that does to a person's brain. I cannot relate to someone who is constantly, 24-7, surrounded by friends, family, her team, everyone invested in her happiness and her success. You can't tell me that that wouldn't have an effect on someone's brain. I don't even know what that would be like. So I think at the Grammys, we, we saw the facade. We saw the filter that she wants us to view her through. And honestly, as someone who has done a lot of my own work on healing and trying to be present, unmasking, watching these clips of Taylor Swift actually just made me sad. You can see in these clips how much she is performing for us. And I don't mean in the way of like performing on stage. I mean treating your life like a performance in front of an invisible audience. It's absolutely miserable. I don't think Taylor Swift is a bad person. I know some Swifties are going to be mad at this video, but I'm still a Taylor Swift fan. I'll still listen to her music. I'll still talk about it on my main channel. But I wanted to talk about it here because the discourse often swings in extremes. One day, Taylor Swift is a perfect angel pop star with a hot NFL boyfriend on the biggest world tour ever. And God forbid you say something against her. And the next, she's a psychopathic narcissist with dark evil energy. It's exhausting. I want us to find the conclusion somewhere in the middle. I want us to be able to find nuance in this discussion. Can we find a way to support the artists that we love while also acknowledging that they are basically existing on a different planet? We are not living in the same culture. We are not having the same experiences. Oh, and for what it's worth, I no, I don't think the Super Bowl was rigged so that Taylor Swift could have like her fairy tale ending. As boring as it is, the Chiefs are a really good team. So at the end of the day, celebrities like Taylor Swift are not living lives like ours, not even remotely similar to us. And so I think for us to have like healthy fan behavior, we have to detach our experience from theirs. And I say this fully recognizing that I was empathizing with her <laughs> on like performing for an invisible audience, but so no, I don't think she's a narcissist in the way that she has a like diagnosed personality disorder, which how could anyone online even diagnose that? But I do think she's a performer 24-7, 365 days a year. And now that we've seen that, where are we going to end up? Are we going to the Taylor Swift is evil and shouldn't be supported? Or are we going to end up in the much healthier place, in my opinion, that I like Taylor Swift, but she is not one of us. Like I said, I just find it sad. I was caught off guard at how I felt when I saw these clips. Maybe because I've felt, albeit a much tinier part than she has, that feeling of performing all the time. And it's honestly, it's just miserable. Because it needs to be said to the Swifties who are watching, I'm still a fan. And maybe you don't want me to be, but I am. I like Taylor Swift. I like her music. But I find the conversation about our relationships with celebrities and people we idolize, I find it very interesting. So what are your thoughts on all of this? I would love to hear from you in the comments. Bye.